In this video, we're going to look at another example of using L'Hopital's rule to evaluate limits. So, like I said in the previous video, to use L'Hopital's rule, we need to make sure that the limit that we're evaluating evaluates to be in indeterminate form at face value. So how do we check that? But we pass the limit of this original thing that we got going on here, right? So let's pass the limit of this difference that we have here. So this first fraction will become 8 over, and then we have sine of t, but t is approaching 0 from the right. So the argument of this sine function will approach 0 from the right, and as that argument approaches 0 from the right, sine of something approaching 0 from the right will approach, <laughs> ironically, 0 from the right, right? So here we're going to have 8 divided by 0 minus 2 over, and then we said t approaches 0 from the right, right? So the denominator of this, being just t, is going to approach 0, right? So we have this. So what this form becomes is something like infinity minus infinity, because 8 divided by 0 is undefined, 2, minus 2 divided by 0 is undefined, so we know that that kind of roughly translates to infinity minus infinity, which is in fact an indeterminate form. Okay, so L'Hopital's rule is available to be used. We can go ahead and use that. Before I use L'Hopital's rule in this situation, what I'm actually going to do is combine this difference of fractions into one fraction. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because after we do this, we're going to see it's going to be a little bit simpler to take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator as opposed to doing something like this. And even if we take the derivative of this thing over and over again, as because we have to take the derivative of this and this individually, what we're going to keep getting is just powers of this denominator are going to keep growing and growing and growing and not really become anything. It's going to always be, we're going to have always have something minus infinity in this sense. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to translate this into an equivalent form, but we're going to have it be one fraction. So we're going to find a common denominator, make this one fraction, and then take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the nom denominator individually. Okay, so what's the common denominator between these two denominators? Well, we see it's going to have to be this multiplied by this. So what we're going to have is we're going to have equivalently the limit as t approaches 0 from the right of something over t times sine of t, right? So now that we have this product, we know that this fraction was missing a t in its denominator, so we need to multiply 8 by t, and then this fraction was missing a sine of t factor in its denominator, so we've got to multiply 2 by sine of t. So this will be our combined fraction here. So now, since we know that this was indeterminate in its original form, let's do a quick check to make sure that this is still indeterminate. Uh, t approaches 0 from the right here, so we get 8 times 0, 0 minus, and then we said sine of t is going to evaluate to 0, so we get 0 minus 0, so we have 0 on the top, and then we have that this t approaches 0 from the right, and then again, sine of t, as t approaches 0 from the right, approaches 0, so we get that this is 0 over 0, and it's still indeterminate. So we're all good, we can use L'Hopital's rule, and we can see if we can figure out what this limit is after we do that. So this limit, through use of L'Hopital's rule, will have the same expression of itself as limit as t approaches 0 from the right still, but now we're going to take the derivative of the numerator and then the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of the numerator is the difference of two functions, right? So we can take this derivative and this derivative. So we have the derivative of 8t is 8, and then we get minus, and then 2 is a constant multiple, so we just need to figure out what the derivative of sine of t is, and we know that's cosine of t. So that's the derivative of our numerator. What about our denominator? Well, we see we have t times sine of t, right? Two functions being multiplied by each other, so we need to use the product rule. And what the product rule tells us is that if we label function t as f and its derivative as f prime, and if we label function sine of t as g and its derivative as g prime, we get this, and product rule tells us that we need to multiply the original function f times g's derivative and then add it to the original function g times f's derivative. So we get t cosine of t plus sine of t. All right, we get something like that. So this is the denominator of our new fraction here. We're just going to rewrite it. So we get this right here. And then now we're going to do another pass to the limit test right here by plugging in 
0 for t and kind of evaluate it as t approaches 0 from the right. So in the numerator, we're going to get 8, because there's no t value there inside of that 8 term. Then we're going to have minus 2 times cosine of t as t approaches 0 from the right. And we know that as t approaches 0 from the right, cosine of that t will approach the value of 1, right? So we're going to have 2 times 1, because as t grows closer to 0 from the right, cosine of that value growing 0 to the right will approach 1. So that's our numerator. And then our denominator, we see that t here will approach 0 naturally. We already talked about how cosine of t will approach 1. So we get 0 times 1. And then plus, we said sine of t up here, we talked about how it evaluates to 0, right? So using this path to the limit, what we get is that we get 8 minus 2 over 0 plus 0 after doing some simplification, but then we get 6 over 0. Is this an indeterminate form? I leave that question to you guys for a little bit, but then I come through with the answer and say that it is not. It is not an indeterminate form. To be indeterminate, we would have to look like 0 divided by 0 or infinity divided by infinity. Here, we have some number, some constant divided by 0. And what did we say happens when we get something like that? Well, we get infinity, right? Or we know that it evaluates to be 6 divided by 0 is undefined because we divide by 0. But when we're taking the limit of something like this, and this appears as our limit, we associate that with saying that our limit, as t approaches 0 from the right of this function, is going to be infinity. So our limit is actually going to be written as just infinity. We're not going to write it in the 6 divided by 0 form. We're going to write it as equals infinity. Okay. So again, we covered the fact that to use L'Hopital's rule, we have to be presented with a function that when evaluated at its c value that it's approaching for the limits purposes, we have to get an indeterminate form. And once we get that, we can manipulate the function if we need to and still obtain an indeterminate form in this manner and then use L'Hopital's rule to take the derivative of each piece and then pass the limit of this new limit function that we have to see what our limit becomes. And then we also kind of re reviewed the fact that 6 divided by 0 is not indeterminate. It simply means that our limit is going to be infinity.